back to my channel. Here is a special guest, a good friend of mine from um, Nick's Haunted Diaries, and she's been taking classes with me too, and she has a lot of experiences that she's been going through recently. It's, it's really interesting. Her name is Courtney Chaos Brickford and has been experiencing a spiritual awakening and has experienced all sorts of psychic abilities, and she's here to share her stories, and if we go off topic, that's just for us, we're enjoying each other's company a little too much. <laughs> so welcome to the show, Courtney. Thank you. You are. Uh, so we were just talking about that you're, you're and I, I, I'm in the same boat. I want to go to an investigation. I haven't gone, gone to one yet officially um, to two places that you want to go to to investigate. No, she's not a professional, nor am I. I'm just more like a research, research like enthusiast. And I've had some experiences with the paranormal. Um, she's been wanting to go to two places. And what was those two places you were about to tell me when I interrupted? <laughs> uh, number one would be Helltown. Okay. Where they did the experiments. Um, that's number one. And number two would be the Gates of Hell Cemetery in Kentucky. Bishop James Long was talking about. Oh, yeah. That sounds really interesting <laughs> and spooky. And, and those uh, are two places that Zach the Ghost Ventures have never been. Oh, really? Because they've been everywhere. <laughs> it's like they, they've been to everything. Yeah, I know. Until he got his fear of flying from a, a bad uh, flight. Well, that's weird. I didn't know that. Because I had that too. <laughs> I had a bad experience. That's why he doesn't, he doesn't travel overseas. He doesn't fly on airplanes anymore. Because he had a bad flight and um, it terrified him and he won't get on an airplane ever again. <laughs> oh, no. What got you interested in the paranormal? Well, um, I really got into it in 2000, 2008 when... After the document Ghost Adventures did and they started the series, um, that's when I got into, but before they came on, I was watching uh, the original Ghost Hunters. And so really I could say the Ghost Hunters started it all and then they kind of faded out and then Ghost Adventures became really big. And then from there, all these different shows started popping up and I just started watching a lot of them, most of them anyway. Um, but I've been following Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters from the beginning, so I've seen just about everything that the Ghost Adventures have, have they've done. I think I've been on this, like, I, I started watching them back in, when did they start? I keep forgetting. Was it 2006 or after that? Eight. Eight. 2008. Was the first Bobby Matthews episode? Okay, yeah, because that's 2006 is when I. The documentary, I believe, was 2004. Oh, yeah, when well, then, yeah, that's what I saw first. It was the documentary, and I thought it was the flying a flying brick. But then, yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> the flying mm -hmm. brick. How did you find Nick's Haunted Diary Paranormal School? Well, when I was a member back in October. It was the Haunted Diary. It wasn't uh -huh. the Haunted Diary Paranormal School until, what, December? Yeah. So I had already joined, and there's only like 100 and less than 200 people. And it was known as the Haunted Diary, uh, not the Haunted Diary School. So I've been there before he changed it over. And, um, yeah, I met him back in October, I think it was, and made a prediction to him. And I oh, this is what I wanted to told hear. him way back in October that he was going to be like the Nick Pack Vegans in the paranormal world, meaning that he was going to have a significant contribution to the paranormal world. And he be catapulted into he's going to become world famous. And mm -hmm. so now he's got this haunted diary paranormal school which i don't know if there's another one like that and then now this is 
before I even this other project of Paraflix is coming out in March. And I said this back in October. And so Islam's first um, streaming, video streaming, paranormal only platform. I don't think there's another one. in the. So it's like the world's first exactly. paranormal only video streaming just and I made that prediction back in October. I think that's really cool and fascinating. How did you, um, we were talking about this when we, we first contacted each other. How did you come to realize that you have abilities or you were awakening to? How did that get into? Well, I've always had abilities. Um, I saw two apparitions as a child and then in my early 30s, I started having psychic dreams where I was talking with people that had passed over. And, um, like, I've always been able to, I've always had a little touch of ESP and sense energies and things. And But my psychic awakening didn't happen until it was December 31st last year on Richard Lyle Lillard's birthday. And... I texted him happy birthday and I was actually in quarantine because two of my family members were exposed to COVID and they had to be tested. So the day before I'd actually gotten tested, but they were out of the rapid kit. So I had to wait seven days anyway to get my results. And then they came home the next day and said, oh, we just had to get tested because somebody at work has it so I had to quarantine for seven days and they found out they were negative before I did and I quarantined and it was like I told Richard Lyell he sent me positive energy for the COVID and um that I during the quarantine I like lost my appetite for like six days in a row and I only ate like three times and I had was drinking water, just water, and I my had many many trips to the bathroom, and it was kind of like my body was purging itself and cleansing itself, and it, I didn't have any symptoms of COVID, and it just bam it just hit me and then every time i would have a class at nick's school something significant especially with father sebastian both times he taught a class something significant happened in my dreams that night well actually one of them happened was about class about sigils and i walked outside right after the class to take down christmas lights and all i looked up in the sky and i could see all kinds of sigils like a crucifix that was intertwined with my symbol Aries, which is a V. So it was like the crucifix was like that. And then this part went off into a V and it's on my page. And, um, and then the sign for uh, cancer. And it was also the sign for Pi, P-I, the infinite number 3.14. And I got to looking at it a few weeks later and I went back and edited it and started zooming in and I saw like a uh, angel wings, a voluptuous angel, a unicorn, a big hummingbird. And I was circling everything. So people, cause I didn't see it the first time and um, two faces in the cloud, another airy sign and I can't remember what else. And then the other class to start with Father Sebastian, we got on the subject of um, spirits hiding objects from you and messing with you. And that that was on a Friday night. Well, Thursday I got Patty's book, The Old World Magic. I got that. So I laid I it, it on top of. I the have notebook. it on the thing, not the notebook. But I should get it later, the physical, but I have the. And then the Friday before the class, I got the book that Father Sebastian refers to, Libranol and Psychonaut. 
and I put it on top of Patty's book. So there was a notebook, and then there was her book, and there was his book. So it was in between the notebook and the book. And during the class, nobody came in my room, and I was the only one in there. He started on the subject of spirits hiding things from you, and then after the class, I never even got to look through her book, so I wanted to look through it, and I went to go o over and get it, and it would, it disappeared. Like, nobody ever came into the room, and I would looked everywhere for it, and I had my family members looking for it, and um, I told Patty, the author, of the, Negri, the author of the book, that I couldn't find it, and she told me that it would be somewhere that I'd already looked, or it would be somewhere that I would never think to look in a million places or in a million years and um then a couple days I don't know a day or two went by and she asked me if I found it and I said no she said offer it something like honey or cream or something shiny so I took my diamond necklace and um, I have our fed our fed tonight sphere it's about that big around and I draped my necklace over it and I just started, she told me what to say, and I just started, um, I have a two-story house. And I just started saying, um, please put my book back where I can find it. Um, I don't mean you any harm or disrespect. Um, you know, I don't know why picking you picked things. that particular <laughs> thing to hide. Yeah. And then I said, don't tie the necklace and put the book back and take the necklace. <laughs> and so then Charlie Krzyzewski, um, he's psychic, and he made a comment under my post about it that it was behind, a, he said it was behind a dresser. Well, I don't have a dresser. My, my daughter's old bedroom has a dresser, and I told him I had other pieces of furniture so I actually looked with a flashlight behind all the furniture in my bedroom and even underneath it under the bed under the chest under the arm wire and under the two nightstands and the only thing I could find was a couple of dog toys that got pushed under my nightstand on my side of the bed and when I looked under there there was a bunch of trash so I really didn't find anything and then um I went to sleep and the next morning instinctively I I don't know why I thought this but I started thinking about what Patty said you know it would be in somewhere you would never look and then Charlie said it was behind a dresser so I got up woke up out of my sleep and I just looked at the nightstand and I there's a small drawer on the top and there's a really deep drawer on the bottom and they're on a track and I pulled out the bottom drawer completely off the track. And all I could see laying there was dog hair and trash that got blown under there by this uh, um, floor fan, because the floor fan for noise. And there was this big empty saltwater taffy bag laying there and with some other trash. And because my dog likes to take the trash out of the trash can and then she messes with it and then it gets blown under there. Well, I went down and I picked up the taffy bag and there was the book wow. laying there perfectly, perfectly placed underneath the taffy bag. And I made, I made the argument that even if somebody was saying I was making it up and that I actually probably just left it in the top of the drawer the top drawer and what probably had it fell behind the drawer well if that would have happened it, it would have fallen into the bottom drawer inside the drawer it wouldn't have fallen behind the drawer and in, in the back and go under the track because it was laying in the middle of the drawer on the carpet underneath the sliding track it was like laying here and the drawer slides over it. That's awesome. so. Wow. That was my argument. I know I didn't leave it in the top drawer. It was across the room from me. Wow. But yeah, I uh, significant things happen when I dream. 
like my I have like eight abilities and gifts and when I'm awake, the, the ones that work when I'm awake are ESP communication, well, telepath. Um, empathy and um, and um, sensing sensing energies. That I know. Uh, those are the ones that that happen when I'm awake, and and I've heard a disembodied voice too, and um, in my while well, I was asleep when that happened, but the big stuff happens in my dream. I've done, I guess you could enter to say time travel and astral projection are the same thing. And I did was looking at a yearbook from fourth grade that I had saved because it was my favorite teacher. And I was looking at it before I went to bed. And that night I had a dream that I went back to fourth grade and I was 11 years old, but I was really 49 in my mind. And I told my teacher, she was the same age and all my friends were 11 years old, like I was. And I told her, it was like that movie Back to the Future. I told my teacher, I was like, uh, I'm, I'm from the future. And I was telling her everything that had happened to me and up to age, I'm 49. And she believed me and I was talking to all my friends and then there's this one girl named Trisha Roundtree in my class and we lost touch after fourth grade. I used to spend the night with her all the time. And, uh, when I went, I went to Riverdale high school in Georgia, I said, your last name is Roundtree. And I said, okay. I'm when I moved in with my mom, when I was 16, 15, uh, almost 16, she lived in Roundtree. So division, we lived on Roundtree Road, or Roundtree Circle. And she goes, oh, my God. And I said, what? She said, my family owns that land. What? And I said, I've been trying to get in touch with Miss Keach. I don't even know if she's still alive. And she goes, my mom is her best friend. Yeah, she's still alive. And I'm like, still waiting on her to get, give me the information to get in touch with her. Cause she's got to be at least in her late seventies, early eighties. And she's like, well, my mom was best friends with her. And so I just thought, and she's also, she also has gifts. She, she's people, she, she's a, uh, I guess you could say necromancy, but it happens when she's awake. Like her grandmother is her spirit guide and oh, okay. her that she's already passed. She always showing up and talking to her so she can hear spirits and they she's like they're always around her like Amy Allen, you know. I just can't see my I can't um, stand noises in the back if I'm talking to somebody because it like gets to me. And I don't know why recently and it's not from the house. I've been hearing at night, like at one in the morning, everything's quiet and I just hear this weird beep, beep beep in the distance and it's driving nuts. I can hear there's a lot of times at night like a lot and the TV will be on but I sit up in the bed and I go like that and I look around and I can hear the old time like um not calliope the music static. you know what calliope music oh, is um, no it's actual music the like from the carnival they call it calliope the organ yeah it's it's not like saloon like the, in the saloons, they used to play the piano. Um, it would be kind of like that. Like I could hear music and that happened for like a week straight. And I would just sit up in the bed and just look around and I could just hear it just faintly. And I never could, I never could figure out why. You might be picking so up something. It, that was just there, weird. That's another um, psychic ability. People don't realize if they're not like into the paranormal and they're just watching the show just for <laughs> out of nowhere. So what is it called? It's um there's a name for it. I can look it up. Uh, it's all audio. You could you could pick up cyclic cyclically something either through your smells, ears, uh, senses. Like if you taste blood, like okay. Then I have nine abilities. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one. Cause I know, and it doesn't happen a lot. I have none. <laughs> it, I don't even count it. I just, there's something random that happens. I know there's something going on, but, um, 
Oh, I've had it in the past, like during meditation. Like I've, I've smelled before too. Yeah. In some of the classes I've taken with Nick, I think it was with Patty. It's happened twice. And then one with Kira, Kyra. And I think it's like my guys telling me like, it's okay. It's safe. It's like their way of telling me you're good, that you're covered. I'll smell roses, the fresh flowers cut. And there's no flowers in my house. <laughs> so there's no reason. And I don't have perfume that's flowery. I either. smell I smell tobacco a lot. And mm-hmm. uh, um, just like wood, uh, yeah. that masculine Sandalwood. scent of... Like the sun shining on a piece of wood, and you can smell the wood. Let me look. Back. I don't know what you call that, but um, I don't know. It just felt like it was in a man. Men used to have their own parlor, you know, and the men would hang out in one room, the women would hang out in the other. Clear audience. That's the word I was looking for. When you hear something. If you if you don't have a disorder, bipolar, or whatever, if you don't, you know, or you go to the doctor, and there's no other diagnosis, you have the ability of clear clear audience you could hear. It doesn't happen to me a lot. That's why I know I'm not, and I already okay. been to the doctor, <laughs> and that it's not that. Um, when I meditate, oh. the two times I meditated, I've so that heard. gives me nine gifts now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's different kinds of stuff, but your strong suit, you were telling me then it's through your dream. So that's called pre, pre, not, I can never say that word. Pre-cognit- Precognition. Yes. And that's what I have. Precognitive. Sure. Yes. Well, see, that's weird because I can, uh, necromancy, I can, I can communicate with the people that have passed. But I can also channel living people in my dreams. Yeah, you could do that. Like, That's astral projection. <laughs> and like I know, I've, I've only. So it's it. not the same as time travel, like I did when the fourth grade. There's when I had that dream about the fourth grade. There's only like speculation. Was that actual time travel? It could have. Like, there's no rules to this. Like, this is something everybody's learning still with. And it's more, if you want to go more scientifically, like more of that in that connection. I only saw that with, um, let me pull it up. His name is, uh, he was on Coast to Coast the other day. And he was uh, explaining that the way, now this is going to get way weirder if people are watching, like this is getting deeper to the rabbit hole. <laughs> Don't take this seriously. Take this with a grain of salt. This is only it's funny for- you say rabbit hole because I have another friend that <laughs> says that all the time. And she and I can read each other's minds. Yeah. I've, I've, it's something until the person doesn't experience for themselves, they can't believe in it. Once you experience it for yourself, you're like, whoa, what is this? This, this, is, <laughs> this is a real... Yeah, I know. <laughs> hit me when I was after my purge it was like bam 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 everything kept happening and then this last Saturday it's like the brakes were screech came to a screeching halt and nothing has happened I haven't had any dreams since Saturday and I thought it's because I was distracted and um it might but then I saw that post that was on Instagram oh. and she somebody at my page and um, commented that all the intuitive people are thinking something major is going to happen in March or April even. And so I I was like, I immediately said March 15th. It's called March 15th is called the Ides of March, the I-D-E-S. That's the date that Julius Caesar was assassinated um, in 44 BC. Um, so I made I made the prediction that something significant was going to happen March the 15th, in the eyes of March. Well, it would be. And then 
it would be a year from since officially the lockdown started. I think it was around March is when the lockdown started to happen in the United States. I can't remember. Yeah, because I had my knee surgery March 13th. And two days later, that was the 15th. It was the Ides of March. I mean, I, COVID literally happened right at two days after I, everything just exploded two days after when I went home after my surgery because they started canceling all the surgeries yeah. after that. Um, so I said March 15th, something's going to happen. And then I saw something else, a lady, the same lady that said uh, something, they think something's going to happen in March. She sent me a YouTube link of this lady making predictions, and I didn't watch the way through. She told me to go back and watch it, and I haven't watched the whole thing yet. It's kind of long. She said to predict her prediction at the end or, or, or a kind of predictions, and she said she watched the whole thing. And there's someone on it that said something similar what, to what I did, that something was going to happen on March 15th. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have to watch that and see what they said, see how, how similar it is to my, what I said. You're picking up on the collective. And then so now. I sound like some. Yeah. And then the, <laughs> this morning I saw a post. This woman said, now is the time all the pieces, psychic, it was something along the lines of, it was a meme, I think it was, and it said, now is the time for all the, the uh, intuitives and people with psychic gifts in the whole world to come together and, and use our collective powers and make the world better something along those lines I, it was i can't remember who who posted it the new age the, the yeah the yeah that's what she aquarius. was talking about yeah the um, age of aquarius that was my prediction in my first interview because sonny kaminsky asked me about that what was your my prediction for 2021 so what i so, yeah when i did the interview with sonny kaminsky the last question he asked me was what is your project prediction for 2021 and I said, I think it, everybody is going to have a light bulb moment or something like that. And they're going to wake up and they're going to realize that things need to change. People need to come together um, because they finally are going to realize all these hate things happening and all these violent acts that are happening and and the differences in the government the parties and they're going to realize that one day like your children are going to inherit the next generation is going to inherit what we leave them and I told them I believe everybody's going to come together and I did meet in Aquarius and I said, they're going to come together because they're going to realize they don't want to leave the next generation of children in with a world that is like the world we're living in now. And they want to make it to where they don't have to go through what we're going through. Mm -hmm. Is what yeah. I told them. I agree, too. I agree. I think that's what's going to happen. And that's why I was stuck. And somebody else, I asked another, like, friend of mine that she's psychic and she's she could communicate with what they what she calls the Orion Council and you can look her up on uh, YouTube and that's her YouTube name Orion Council and I asked her because I was watching her videos like what do you think you think because I'm trying to like verify like what I was feeling because I felt the same like the age of Aquarius is like coming like this is not this is it. This is the beginning of it. I asked her, you think that's soon? And she's like, yeah, I think this is starting. <laughs> she said it on her channel as I asked her. And I'm like, this is confirmation then. And no one was talking about this yet. This yeah, because remember. 
I mean, no, October. Sorry. You remember when the Capitol got stormed by um, what the Republicans was it that just stormed yeah. the Capitol? Yeah. Okay. When that happened, when all that the guns were drawn and everything, Aries was, and I'm an Aries. Aries was at 29 degrees. And then after everything died down, it transitioned Capricorn at 30. So it was in chaos in Aries, and then it switched to 30 degrees and went into Capricorn after everything had settled down. So that was a significant date. Okay, let me wait. I can't remember. I can't remember what date it was. Um, I'm not good at astrology. I just let myself go. Well, I'm not either, but. Well, you got a good memory for it, though, because I don't know the, the significance for each thing. I just, like, I have this feeling some, this is going to happen. Like, I, And that's another ability. That's There's feeling, there's hearing, there's smell. There's hearing and seeing. There's different names for it. And that, that night of the capital. Well, I predicted the date. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the Antifa attack started. Um, I told... My family member was supposed to go on a plane somewhere out of town, and they ended up canceling. Before he left, I said, something significant is going to happen. Something bad is going to happen, and it's going to affect the world. And, and Question, but did you, all did I could you say feel was it, or did you doom. see it? I'm sorry. Did you feel it, or did you see it, or I'm how did you Kind of a up? little bit of both. Okay. Like a little bit of both. And I said something... I, I said, I don't know what it is. All I could see was, or hear was impending doom. And um, um, what was the other word? Dread. Yeah. That's and what I, saw. I was telling a friend of mine that I went to high school. And I told him, I said, I think it started two weeks at the date that I said it. And I remember the date that I said it. Um, and I said, I think it started two weeks after June the 9th. And he texted me back and he said, uh, he keeps up with the news. And I don't. And he said, uh, Courtney, the Antifa stuff started on June the 9th. And I said that that morning on June the 9th. So I kind of predicted that. Do you keep a so journal for my, that stuff? My family right? members. No, because I can remember it. My 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 family is like they're a little skeptical, but now they're starting to believe more. And be like, oh, oh wait a minute, Currently you can see. And, but they've already told me. They told me years ago when I was in my thirties after I had this amazing dream where I dreamt what was on the front page of my city's newspaper. As it was being printed, and I freaked out my family members when that happened, and they said, usually my dreams come true, and they all said to me, if you ever have a bad dream about me, I don't want to know. So. So now they believe you. <laughs> um, that's amazing, though. I, I was going to say, so, oh, the night of the capital thing. The night before, I think it was two nights, and ever since then, it's been hard for me to sleep.